Right, <coughs> welcome back, back everybody. Um, off to the next session. Same as usual, making sure that you're working at your own pace and within your own comfort, just choosing the option that suits you better. Drop down an option, stick to the same option if you feel that it's overloading, it's loading the wrong muscles or you don't quite have enough controller to progress it. So just working with the, within your own cap capabilities. So starting off lying down on the back. I'm going to allow the back to set into his neutral alignment. So hip and pubic bone are nice and level at the top. The lower back is nice and soft, just slightly raised from the ground. The ribcage is down, the shoulders are down, the head is down. If you need a little support below the head, popping a block underneath the head, towel, jumper, anything to bring the head up slightly. <laughs> and then from there, I'm just going to work in and out of neutral. So I'm going to tilt the pelvis back, pressing the lower back gently into the mat and then forward the back into neutral again. So see if I can get a gentle rocking coming from the hips. Noticing how supple or stiff the lower back feels. I might find that it feels very stiff, so the movement feels very restricted, very tight. I'm just going to keep the movement going, see if I can lose enough, or see if I can get some movement going through the back. Think of the minimum amount of effort possible. So I don't feel my legs tensing, I don't feel my inner thighs pulling, I don't feel my bone clenching, the neck is not stiffening, the shoulders are not tightening up, it's just a little tension at the front of the belly. I'm going to tighten up, the pelvis will start tilting backwards, I'm going to release, I'm going to let the pelvis rock forward. So nice and loose and nice and relaxed. As you feel the movement, it starts feeling a little bit loose, it starts feeling a little bit more relaxed. Then see if you can find that midway point where you know that you're not in an imprint, so the lower back is not pressing into the ground and it's not hyperextending, it's not arching too far away from the ground. You're in neutral, you're into that centered midway position. The back should be feeling quite comfortable, the hips should be feeling quite centered. Maintaining that level through the hips and, and then focusing on your pelvic floor. You've got two slings going front to back and then side to side and they glide over each other as allowing the pelvic floor muscles to tighten up. Men and women, no difference. It's just men's it's on the outside, women's on the inside, but the pelvic floor muscles are the same. So try to focus on your front and back passage. I'm going to try and draw the front and the back passage together. So imagine a midway point to see if you can try and draw them together towards that midway point. So see if you can be aware of that sling going from pubic bone to tailbone, tightening gently. The pelvis shouldn't be moving, so I'm not tilting the pelvis at this time. I'm holding the pelvis nice and stable, nice and still. I'm just trying to find that gentle connection front to, uh, front to back. So I'm going to try and draw them together and then let them relax. Draw them together and then let them relax. And then as you're doing so, notice the difference between the left and the right side. So if I can divide my pelvic floor into four quadrants, I've got two at the front, right and left, and then two at the back, right and left again. See if I can be aware of the tension as I pull the front to back being the same right and left to side. And then you might actually be aware that one side is tensing quite easily, so it feels as if you're shortening and connecting quite easily. The other side seems to be struggling, seems to be left to slightly be slightly behind. So noticing where you feel that discrepancy is it on the right or on the left side. And then once that you know that it's on your right side or your left side, focus on that side to see if you can encourage a little bit more connection that way. Also notice if it's towards the front or towards the back. So if it's on my right side, is the front quadrant or is it the back quadrant that doesn't seem to be connecting through? So comparing it to the side that seems to be working. 
So I feel I've got a little bit more connection. So I can feel that gentle tension drawing the two towards each other. I'm going to change the direction of the pull. So this time, instead of pulling front to back, I'm going to pull side to side. So imagine it possible to be drawing your seat bones together towards that center point. So I'm going to try and pull towards the middle. So think of a sling that goes across the, the pelvic floor this time from the right hip to the left, from the left to the right, to see if I can tighten it through the middle. So trying to draw the seat bones together and then release, draw the seat bones together and then release. And then same as you did for the front to back attention, notice any movement elsewhere. So do I feel my bone clenching? If my bum is clenching, it's not my pelvic floor, it's my bone muscle. I don't want the bone muscle, I want my pelvic floor muscles to connect, to activate, to do the work. So see if I can be aware of that tension across. I don't feel tension in the legs, there is no movement in the legs, there is no movement into the pelvis. And then again, noticing if there is difference right and left to side. Do I still feel weaker on the same quadrant? Do I still feel weak, weaker on the right or the left? See if I can find a better connection. So I'm happy with the tension. I can feel that gentle drawing in from the side to the middle. So this time I wanted to put the two together. So I'm going to pull front to back and then side to side, everything towards that center point. So I'm going to try and draw front to back, side to side, and release, front to back, side to side, and release, front to back, side to side, and release, three, Two, one, and releasing back, releasing through the hips and releasing um, through the pelvic floor. I, I feel that I've got that connection, so I can feel the difference between pulling across and then pulling front to back and pulling along. So I'm going to try and change the position and then see if I can now um, pinpoint which direction the pull that seems to be weaker or doesn't seem to be working as efficiently. So rolling over onto one side and then pushing yourself up into sitting. I'm going to turn myself around by coming up onto my hands and knees. So the hands are directly below the shoulders and the knees are directly below the hips. You can come up onto an open fist if that works better for your wrist and joint. I'm going, I want to imagine a figure of eight on the floor in front of you. So, so think of a nice figure of eight. That way, in that direction. I'm going to try and draw that figure of eight. So I'm going to start to move in towards the left, coming forward, over to the right, moving towards the left, to heave. Round to the right, across to the left, round to the right, across to the left, round to the right, and then over. Keeping the movement again, see if I can just to get a nice, easy movement going through. So exploring the space and making it as big as you want to make it, as far as there is no pain through the wrist or pain through the hips, so it could be a very small or very big movement. Once so you are comfortable with the movement, then hold in steady through the middle, and then exactly the same as we practice on, um, on the back, I'm going to activate it through my pelvic floor. So front to back, side to side, I'm going to hold that tension, and then I'm going to start to move in into that figure of eight. Towards the left, round, back, round, and then starting again. Noticing if you can, hold onto the tension as you're moving, or does it feel as if you're losing that tension? Coming back to the middle, I wanted to draw that figure of eight the other way. So front to back, side to side, 
and then I'm going to move towards my right hand and you stand first, you stand first and then to the left, over to the right hip, to the left and then forward through the arms, around into that figure of eight again. And then same as before, noticing if you are losing control or you're still maintaining that same control. Coming back to the middle, release and down. I'm going to try and make it a little bit easier or a little bit more simple. This time, I want you to try and squeeze just the, your back passage. So I'm going to try and tighten up from my back passage. So just a little tension. I don't want to get the front passage involved this time. So I'm going to hold the tighter from the back and then I'm going to go around into my figure of eight. Notice if at any point you feel that you're losing the tension. I'm going to come back to my starting position and then I'm going to release. If it's already released, then I know that at some point the tension is gone. I'm going to try that again. So I'm going to tighten up from the back passage and then I'm going to draw that figure of eight again. And then I might feel that as I move towards the right hand or as I turn around towards the left hand, I feel that I'm losing that tension. So same as we did at the beginning, think of in quadrants. Which quadrant it doesn't seem to be working? Is it the top left? Is it the back left? Is it the top right? Is it the back right? I'm going to try two more times. So I'm going to tighten up from the back passage. I'm going to draw that figure of eight going around one way. And then I'm going to reverse it going around the other way. And then I'm going to stop back to the middle. Releasing through the wrist if you need to, allowing a little break to the arms or to the shoulders. And then I'm going to try again. But this time I'm just going to try and tighten up from the front passage. So I'm going to try and squeeze from the front passage and then draw that figure of eight. Can I still hold that tension or does it feel as if I'm losing the tension? If I am losing the tension at what point through my eight, am I losing that tension? Is it when I move towards my left hand? Is it move when I move to my right hand? Is it when I go back towards the left knee or towards the right knee? I'm going to go around two more times around this way. Keep holding that tension, keep controlling through. Stop to refresh if you feel that. I'm not sure that I've still got it or not. And then as you finish with the last one, returning back to the middle, release that tension. I'm going to reverse that figure of eight. So pulling up from the front passage, I'm going to go around the other way. One. Refresh that tension. And then round again two. Refresh that tension. Three. By now I know exactly at which point I tend to lose that tension. So I'm really going to focus hard on that point. Refresh and go. Four. One more time. Refresh and draw. And releasing back. Releasing that tension, relaxing back into your um onto your knees, allowing the wrist to relax in the shoulders. I'm going to try that again. The same as before, I'm going to go front to back passage. So I'm going to try and activate it by slings. So coming back onto all fours, I'm going to pull front to back, side to side. So front and back passage are tensing at the same time. Hold on to the tension and then see if you can repeat that figure of eight to see if you can notice any difference. Does it feel as if you've got a little bit more control now? Stop in the middle and then refresh the contraction. Reverse that figure of eight. It's going to run the other way. Again, see if I can get that full control all the way throughout the movement. Release. Again, refresh the contraction. Switch direction. Going around the other way. Coming back through the middle, release, and then again, connect it through, and then round it the other way. And releasing back. Pushing back into shell, unloading the wrist, relaxing the shoulders, 
I feel that I've got a little bit more connection. If I feel, you know, that there is a numbness, or that there is a um, loss of connection, by now I should know which point. Is it the right? Is it the left? Is it front? Is it more at the back? So I'm going to try and focus on that point to see if I can keep insisting, keep, in, keep connecting, keep um, switching it on. So lowering yourself all the way down, we're going to do a nice easy load now. I'm going to roll down onto the back and then resetting my neutral same, <laughs> same as before. I'm going to connect it through the center. So think of front and back passage again joining together and then from side to side, maintaining that tension. And then as you're maintaining that tension through, I'm going to lift the right leg up into tabletop. The right knee comes directly above the hip, the shin is nice and parallel to the ground. I'm going to ease that leg down, keeping that tension through my pelvic floor muscle. And then only when the foot touches the ground, I'm going to relax it. Then I'm going to try the same thing by lifting that left leg. So I'm going to draw in, draw up, and then I'm going to lift that left leg up into tabletop. Then I'm going to keep that tension. I'm going to control the leg down, release that tension, and then I'm going to pull up again. So see if I can maintain that tension as the leg is moving up, as the leg is coming down. If I'm doing it correctly, the, if I put my hand into the bottom of the belly, as the leg moves up and down, I shouldn't be able to feel anything. So it's just a little tension into the belly, but the abdominal wall shouldn't be bouncing up. If it's bouncing up, <clears throat> pelvic floor and transverses, Abdominals are not connecting, they're popping up, which means that my back has been pulled up every time that the leg goes up. So see if I can just be aware. So I'm going to keep that tension through. And then I'm going to ease back down again. If you feel that you've got that tension, Sester, so I feel that the belly's holding steady, the back is not moving, the pelvis is not tipping forward, no back. I feel that I can progress and then I'm going to start doubling the load. So I'm going to connect through lifting one leg up, keep the connection and then see if I can pick up the second leg. Now second leg is much heavier as there is nothing on the floor now to support me. I don't want any change in the belly or in the hips. Pelvic floor still connected through. I'm going to return the left, lower the right, and then I'm going to release it through my pelvic floor muscles. If they've already gone, then you know that you've lost them at some point. I'm going to try again. So I'm going to lift the left leg up into tabletop. If you're going for the second lift, again, controlling through, picking up the right leg, and then controlling it back down, releasing through the left, relaxing through the pelvic floor. And then again on the right side, making sure that you're not forcing the second leg to lift. If I force the second leg to lift, unfortunately I'm getting a detrimental result through the abdominals. As every time that the belly pops up, it stretches the linear alba. So that center split when the belly expands, especially in pregnancies, yeah, during pregnancy or in overweight people, it stretches the abdominal wall out. What I want is to try and bring the two walls back together. So that little pop into the belly is just encouraging that split even more. So making sure that you're trying to draw it together, you're not letting it pull apart. So I'm going to try and pull up from the right and then keep the tension. I'm going to lift up on the left. If I find that I can't, Every time that I lift the second leg, I can feel the belly popping. Then maybe the second leg is too much at this, at this time, at this moment. I just need to give myself a little bit more time to find a better connection through. So I'm happy with the movement. I feel comfortable. I feel a little bit more in control. I can feel a little bit more down into the belly through the pelvic floor muscles. So this time I'm going to release the leg down allowing the hips, allowing the legs a little rest. I'm going to work from the other end. So the principle is the same. What I want is to make sure that 
the abdominal wall is closing, not opening. So I'm going to pop one hand right into the center of the belly and then I'm pulling up through the pelvic floor. So if you can think of not just your seat bones drawing together, but your hip bones are too. So I'm going to try and close everything without exaggeration. So I'm not tensing and tightening everything. It's just a little tension through. And then keeping the hand onto the belly, I'm just going to lift the head off the ground. Just a little lift. And then I'm going to pop the head back down, giving it a little support if you want to, resting the hand on top of the, on, um, onto the back of the head. So just a little lift up and down. As the head comes up, I can feel the tension into the belly. I should be able to feel a little tension into the belly. Now what you need to ask yourself is as my head comes up, do I feel my belly popping up again? So stretching that centre line and then making it even wider or can I hold it together? If I find that I'm still very numb around the area, so I can't feel much, it's not, I, d I really don't know, or I don't know how to do it, I'm just missing the connection right into the body, then I'm going to encourage that direction. I'm going to clench the fist, and then I'm going to sit the hands on either side of the belly. So I'm going to pop them in there. As the head comes up, I'm going to try and push the two sides of the belly together. So I'm going to use the arm to manually help me close that line. So think of the split. The split could be higher than the belly button or around the belly button or just below the belly button. So I'm going to try and center my hand around the belly button and then really trying to close everything down. So not at the bottom, not at the top, but right in the middle. So I'm going to <coughs> put the hands in there. I'm going to connect it through the pelvic floor. And then as I lift the head, I'm going to squeeze the two ends of the muscles together through the middle. Then I'm going to ease my way back. And then I'm going to try again, pull up through the pelvic floor, squeezing the two sides together, lifting the head, pelvic floor still connected. I'm going to ease my way back, releasing everything down. And again, squeeze in with the hands, lift the head, lift up from the front passage. And then I'm going to release back. So connecting through, squeeze with the hands, lifting the head and then releasing back. We're going to try two more times. So pulling up from the front passage, squeezing, lift up and releasing back. Last time, pulling up from the front passage, squeezing, lift up and releasing back giving the head a gentle roll making sure that the neck doesn't feel too stiff too tight so i feel a little bit more connected through so i can feel the pelvic floor i can feel the transverse drawing in trying to join the two sides of the belly back together making sure that the belly is not splitting out is not opening out is not stretching out so i'm going to try the same i'm going to change the position one more time so rolling over onto your side and then slowly pushing yourself up into sitting. I'm going to reset myself back on all fours. The shoulder blades are back and down, shoulders and neck nice and supported. From here, I'm going to try and focus on the breath. So think of your lower back. The lower back is staying soft. I'm going to take a deep breath in and on purpose, I'm just going to really exaggerate that breath. I'm going to let it come down into the belly. So I want the belly to drop. So I'm going to inhale, let the belly drop and expand. As I exhale, I'm going to try and draw up from my pelvic floor and then pull it up from the belly. See if I can draw in gently. Then again, I'm going to inhale, I'm going to let go. Exhale, drawing up from the pelvic floor, drawing up, drawing in from the belly, and then let it go again. Maintaining that tension going on and off with the breath, 
notice the position can you make sure that the back is not moving so i'm not tilting my pelvis forward and back there is no movement involved other than the abdominal wall sinking down with the in inhalation with the in breath and then drawing back in drawing back up with the exhale so i feel that i've got a good connection I'm going to try and challenge it now. So can you do the same, but can you do it faster? back is still nice and still the belly is still drawing up and down pelvic floor still drawing in lifting up noticing any difference between right and left side the tendency is after a while to get muddled so the belly feels as almost as if it's like running wild it's going all over the place so you can still maintain that steady lifting through one two three four five six seven eight nine ten tighter two three four five six seven eight nine ten stronger two three four five six seven eight nine ten nice and still through the back four five six seven eight nine ten last ten nine eight seven six five four three two one and releasing back and loading the wrist the relaxing the shoulders releasing through the arms so there's a little bit more connection through i'm going to try the same but i'm going to do it in reverse so this time i'm going to try from bridging so taking the legs around to the side lowering yourself all the way down until your back on your back the feet and knees about hips width apart the arms are relaxing down the side Pushing down through the soles of the feet, to squeezing with the back of the bum, I'm going to drive my way up into bridge. Holding the lift at the top, the hips are open, the back is relaxed, I'm maintaining the lift there. Now focus just on your pelvic floor. Can you squeeze up? So can I try and draw back to front passage and then seat bones together? And then release that tension and then can I draw it in again? Release that tension, can I draw it in again? And then notice the tension. Do I feel my bum clenching and releasing? Remember, your bum is your it's not your pelvic floor. Your bum muscle is your bum muscle. So can I try and hold the hips active? Can I try and keep my bum active to hold the hips up? Can I keep the pelvis still? So can I make sure that the hips are not bobbing up and down? They're holding nice and steady. Just that tension through the pelvic floor. So nobody else should be able to tell that you're actually working through your pelvic floor muscles as it's an internal contraction it's happening on the inside 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and then i'm going to release my way down one more time pushing through the soles of the feet to squeezing your way up into the lift holding it there and then drawing up one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and releasing down hugging the knees to the chest stretching the lower back and releasing the hips relaxing the pelvis and then when you're ready dropping the feet all the way back down rolling over onto one side and in your own time pushing yourself back up into sitting finding a comfortable seated position hands together thank you very much hopefully you found this useful um please let me know into the comment below anything um so keep in touch good luck